Welcome everyone to Cypher Hunt. My name is Yuri Lavor, and this is part two of Big Money Coming to Crypto. Now, as always, this is my opinion only, not a financial advice. Please do your own research, you guys. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and leave a comment below. Let me know what you all think. So we have left our part one with Soros, and now Rockefellers are moving into crypto as well. In fact, their uh, Van Rock, a $3 billion firm, is planning to invest in crypto. And what is the best way you can kind of come in and say like, hey, you're here and I'm the big dog. I am finally going to invest and trade crypto. Well, one way you can do so on that big hedge fund level is by moving Bitcoin price by $1,000 in 30 minutes. And in fact, that is exactly what has happened four days after they announced that they were going to invest. Now, no one knows for sure if in fact it was the Rockefellers or maybe Soros or another hedge fund, but we do know that it took a lot of money to bring Bitcoin price by $1,000 and it was super quick. So how is Venrock different from Soros? Well, the way that they're different is they're actually teaming up with CoinFund. And CoinFund is basically known um, to invest in projects like CoinList to facilitate ICOs and applications like Kick. So it is more, in my opinion, a hodler strategy than a, uh, a trader. So they are basically going to invest a lot of money. Now, what is important for them, and I'm sure what's important for all the banks out there, is to maximize their control once their money is in. And in the part one, we have talked about how these banks and hedge funds do a lot of over-counter trading and how some of them actually buy exchanges like Goldman Sachs did. And if you haven't watched one uh, part one, you should definitely go and check it out. But now we're going to talk about what's next. So basically, how do you have control and how do you maybe kind of guide exchanges that you partner up with to act on your behalf so then it's more beneficial for you? Well, in this example, I'm going to talk about Coinbase with you guys. So Coinbase is like the biggest uh, American exchange. It has uh, 10 million users. It uh, trades over 50 billion. Um, it, uh, uh, their revenue for last year, in fact, was over $1 billion. And they have a bunch of partnerships. And one of the partnerships that they have recently announced was with this uh, British bank, uh, Berkeley's and how Berkeley is basically going to do, uh, they're, they're now talking to their investors about the benefits of cryptocurrency, right? And also they have partnered up with this BTMU about, uh, two years ago, almost two years ago. And BTMU is actually put Ten and a half million dollars into Coinbase. Now that is not the only obviously investor investment that they have received. In fact, they have raised two hundred and seventeen million dollars from worldwide investors. So what do you do with all this money, right? Well, one way you can think is you go shopping, right? So you basically buy other small companies. So they have acquired earns.com and they have hired their CEO. They have also bought a bunch of people from Twitter, Facebook for their communica communications and they have acquired very important person uh, from uh, LinkedIn. Uh, I believe her name is uh, Choi. And she was a part of the 40 different acquisitions of 1.5 billion purchases in 2015. So you can definitely expect Coinbase buying more and more of smaller companies and hiring more and more of different people. Also, um, introduction of index funds and availability of more tokens to be on the exchange. Well, Coinbase came out and said that they're actually going to be doing um, their uh, they're launching their index funds and that they're doing the ERC20 tokens. So that means that basically they're going to have more and more altcoins coming to the exchange. So what do we know now, right? So we know that 
the banks have done their part. They partner up and acquired some of the exchanges. Now the exchanges are doing their part. So now the banks need to move the, their money into the exchange. Well, one way you can do it is again with this British bank. They're an investment bank, so they move all their money in there. And then after everything is set, that's when all the retails, uh, retail people come in like you and me. So in the end, uh, the banks will have full control and they will set all their rules. Well, I don't think so, you guys. I strongly believe that there is another big entity that is actually bigger than the banks and is going to control everything. And that we will talk about in part three of Big Money. Thank you all for watching. Have a